Kane, Augusta Road, yes, no. here in Garden City, Georgia. And praise the Lord for the pastor in this local assembly. Pastor Harold Elvis Sr. We thank God for Minister Arnold Matthews, Minister Victor Logan, and Minister Emmanuel Gray. We thank God for his goodness and his mercy, for his loving kindness to us. Amen. On this first Sunday in December 2020. Amen. So we're here to give God glory and to thank him for all of his goodness and kindness. Amen. As we reflect on the birth of our loving Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
God still has so many great things in store for those who love him. Amen. Amen.
needed Jesus more now than we ever needed Jesus. You know, we, we can look back on yesterday and say, I was in a pickle and I was in a mess. And I needed the Lord to come to see about me. But yesterday is gone. We need Jesus right now, every minute, every hour. And there's nothing like praising the Lord, nothing like worship to the Lord. There's nothing like when you're in the midst of going through something, you lift up praises to God. And see if just the fact that you lifted up praises to God will not bring you through. We thank God this morning for all that He is and all that He has been in our lives up to this day. We thank you for our early rise this morning and Him being Lord over our lives that in all situations we can rest comfortably knowing that the Lord is in control. We just thank God today that in spite of what the world is going through, the Bible has declared that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. So we can rest knowing that with assurance, hallelujah, it is well, it is well with us, not only with our souls, but with us and as children of God as we travel through this strange land. So we thank God this morning and all that he has but more than anything, we thank God for what he's going to do. So we bless the name of the Lord and we magnify the name of the Lord and we're being encouraged this morning that God will, that God is going to do just what he said. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, oh Lord, we thank you like we've never thanked you before. We just want to come to you this morning by way of prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, which is the only way that we can come. Hallelujah. Let our desires be known unto you, Lord. We desire this day to be able to thank you like we've never thanked you before. We want to uh, make our request known this day that we just want to be the best human of God that we can be. We want you to know, Father, this day that if you just continue to bless us with grace, we will humble ourselves under your mighty hand. We want you to know, Father, that if we come to prayer, this day that our desire is to do your holy and righteous will. We want you to know this day, prayer, Father, if you will lift us up, glory to God, we we'll won't be uh, in a position where we'll ever forget that it's all by your grace. Lord, we thank you in the midst of what it is that we might be going through. Because we know that you're right there with us in the midst of it all. Lord Jesus, we just want to magnify your name as we get into this time of the year where we go through glory to God, this festive season. Hallelujah, and recognize the birth of our beloved Savior. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us to this point, Lord God, and it be your will to see us through to the end of this year. We are going to take every moment and every opportunity. Hallelujah. The same praise to the Lamb of God. We thank you. Now thank you, Lord, for all these that are gathered here. Thank you, Lord, for those who are viewing our way of faith. Thank you for those who have the desire to tune in this morning to see what thus says the Lord. We ask that you would bless, sanctify, and set free those this morning who stand for you. For we know that you're able, because your word declares that nothing is the heart of the Lord. We magnify your name, and we magnify the name of the Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in this hour. Bless, hallelujah, and your power. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, who is King of kings and Lord of Lords. We thank you, and all of God's children say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. One that sits on the throne. Amen, Amen. We thank God uh, again for another day. You know, uh, I just love thanking God in spite of uh, what I might be going through because I, I've sold out, church, to, to the reality, to the truth that God is uh, and that he is able to do all things but fail and that no matter what is going on in my life or around me, I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. Yes. I'm going to lean not to my own understanding, yes. Sister Lena, but in all my ways acknowledge him because I know he'll direct my path. And sometimes uh, when God is directing our path, he might uh, take us to some places that are very unfamiliar to us, but, but the reality is we don't have to be overly concerned because the scenery is not familiar uh, to us. We just need to be concerned uh, to know that really, that God is with us every step of the way. And because he's leading us and guiding us, we are going to inevitably 
believe, get to the place where God wants to get us. And sometimes, as children of God, God has to lead us through some rough territory. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. And sometimes we have to have some wilderness experiences. Oh, yes. But you know, through it all, we, we, we're going to get to the promised land. Amen? Yes. Amen. So we, we thank the Lord this morning for all that um, he has done. I thank God for being back in the house. Yes. I, I went on a little hiatus. Amen. I needed a little a little rest, you know, you, you start, you're getting up in them sixes, you know, a sister Deaton, you, uh, you, you, you need a little rest every now, I don't know why I call your name, but anyway, <laughs> probably because I love you, but anyhow, we, we, we thank God, Deacon Grant, uh, uh, I had a little time off um, to uh, regroup, amen? amen, you know, I want to thank all the ministerial staff for being ready to Come on board and to step in, glory to God. Amen? Amen. Whenever it is needed. Okay, our, our scripture lesson this morning, we are going to be coming from the Gospel of St. John, the fourth chapter. A familiar passage of scripture, uh, the, that fourth chapter where Jesus meets this Samaritan woman at that well at Sychar. We're going to begin reading um, at the 19th verse. John 4, 19. You find that we ask that uh, for those that are able to stand as we declare the reading of God's word, we ask this to Tasha that they, they would stand with us this morning as we honor the reading of God's word. People get upset when we don't stand when the flag and the national anthem is uh, being played, but some of them same people never say anything about acknowledging and honoring the word of God. So, Amen. But we as children of God, we, 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 we got our priorities straight. Amen? Amen. John 4, 19. Everybody know, I say everybody, we, we know the story of Jesus meeting this well, the Samaritan woman at this well at Sychar, and uh, it is purposeful as he has done in our life, but we come to this 19th verse after Jesus has conversed with her and she's conversed with Jesus, and the woman says um, unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Mm -hmm. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. You hear that? Mm -hmm. God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. One uh, translation said it is better uh, uh, fit to, to be translated God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him spirit. in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that when Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, when he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Glory to God. You may keep your seats in the Amen. presence of the Lord. Amen. This, this, this story of this, this woman, as I said, uh, Sister Johnson, at this well, Jesus was going through Samaria and the Bible says that, you know, he, he must needs be to go in this place because the reality is the Bible tells us that when the salvation, when somebody has their appointed time to hear the gospel be small, that the Spirit of God is going to find that person, glory to God, and to do what is necessary in that person's life in order to what? Offer them the grace of God that they might be saved. Well, this is God himself, glory to God, in the flesh. What meeting, going to meet this woman's needs. And that's what God does. He meets our needs. But we are going to see that in the, in the uh, 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 lesson, glory to God, that, that when Jesus confronts her concerning some things, that, that the issue now becomes one of worship. She says, you know, our father said we are to worship here. But you Jews say that we ought to worship at Jerusalem. But Jesus tells her, the hour is coming, woman, where uh, there will be no worship to God from this mountain, nor from Jerusalem. For God is seeking a different 
kind of worshiper. A kind that will worship him in spirit and in truth. So we want to touch on uh, the issue this morning about worship because the time that we're in, when we look at the congregation this morning, that we are assembled in, in small numbers. And there is a reason for it because we're going through a pandemic where there are some city codes and some, some city issues that say we can only, glory to God, gather in small numbers to worship God. Yeah. Hallelujah. But when we know what worship is, it, it really doesn't matter, hallelujah, about the numbers that we have or where we are. Amen. Amen. This is the thing that Jesus wanted to bring to light to this woman who he was bringing salvation. God wants you to know this morning that, that though as believers we, we are often faced with things and that we often meet opposition from the world, he wants you to know this morning because some are, are, are crying about the believers' religious liberties are being infringed upon, whatever that is. He wants us to know this morning that no matter uh, about whether or not the world might try to infringe on our religious liberties, know this, that the world can never hinder our true worship to God. Amen. We need to know that this morning so that we able to go forth and worship to God. It can become discouraging, glory to God, for those who do not know any better, or for those who are born into the accusation that we as believers are having our so-called religious liberties infringe upon, glory to God, that might suggest to some that we are prohibited church this morning from serving and worshiping the true God. In other words, when they get on TV, and it usually comes from the right, as if there's nobody on the left that loves God or serves God, and there's always a right thing that says, our religious liberties are being infringed upon. What they're saying is we can't serve God the way we want to serve God. We can't do the things that are pleasing to God because the world is treading on our religious liberties. They get mad now and tell you that there's an attack on Christmas just because some folk, glory to God, desire to say happy holidays versus Merry Christmas. Now we know that we're not about happy holidays, glory to God, but let me tell you this morning as a believer in Christ Jesus, it doesn't faze me one hour if that person who is unlearned and doesn't know any better say, Happy Holidays. It's my job as a Christian to live the Merry Christmas life that I might get the opportunity, glory to God, to tell them about Jesus. Amen. We have to realize that the God of this age is one who is deceitful and, and devilish and he's always trying to use some things. Why does we as believers, we get all bent out of shape because somebody say Happy Holiday. We ought to be above that to realize that that person just don't know Jesus. Because the reality of it all, those who are born of the Spirit of God, those of us who are walking by the Spirit's power, we know that it's about Christmas, which is about Christ, glory to God. Amen. And every opportunity, based on the lack of knowledge, is an opportunity to share the gospel with somebody. We don't get upset, or we should not get upset, because we're not able to assemble ourselves Glory to God today as we would like to, glory to God, assemble ourselves because in some cases, I believe that the world is imposing on us. But we should not be surprised at any time opposition comes our way, Jesus tells us. Because he's already told us, Steve, that though we are in the world, we are not of the world. Amen. And though we are able to see the world for what the world is, the world can never see us for who we are. And though we love those that are in the world, the world can never love us. So why in the world this morning that we as believers being concerned about religious liberties should be surprised at any time the world comes against us? Hallelujah. Jesus said the world can only love its own. And if we were of the world, he says, the world would love us. But the reality this morning, we as believers are not of the world. Amen. We as believers ought to consider it a badge of honor whenever persecution comes our way. Instead of being offended because we are being persecuted as children of God, we ought to consider it a badge 
of honor. Because the reality is the Bible says that when the glory and the power of God rest upon us, we are going to have to face some things and we are going to be called out for who we are. In other words, when we're walking and we're talking and we're living the way God wants us to live our life that sets us apart, Brother Aubrey, and distinguishes us as children of God, you're going to be persecuted for it. And it ought not upset us, but it ought to bring glory. James said we ought to count it all joy when we find ourselves in divers temptations. We ought not get upset when they don't invite us to their little parties anymore or their social gatherings as they once did. We ought not get upset because they've excommunicated us from their midst, glory to God, because we have chosen to live lives for the glory of God. We have chosen to live lives that are holy. We shouldn't get upset because they exclude us, glory to God. If we got upset, it ought to be because we don't have an opportunity to share the gospel. Amen. Not about getting upset about our little feelings that I'm not invited to their party anymore. Let me tell you something. The Bible is clear. Light and darkness have no communion. God and the devil have no communion. So when glory to God, they begin to shun us. Hallelujah. In many cases in the same. Hallelujah. I don't want that godly person to reign on our parade. We've been set free by the Son of God, who the Son has set free, is free indeed. Count it all joy, glory to God. Count it all joy, not upset, because some say happy holidays. We say Merry Christmas. Count it all joy when we are opposed by the world because of our commitment as believers. We ought to count it all joy when we are opposed by the world because of our desire to worship God. We ought to count it all joy when we are opposed by always standing up for what is righteousness. Opposition from the world is what we ought to come to expect that should not get us upset at any time it arises. When I worked on my job, glory to God, there would be little snippets of things that people want to say. When I walked in the room, holy roller, holier than thou, glory to God, this or that, Tasha, what I tried to do, I didn't get offended, but the fact that they called me holy roller, the fact they called me holier than thou, I tried to live up glory to God, to that standard that they saw me as, not boasting in who I was, but boasting in the Lord. But one thing that when we allow the power of God to live through us, they're going to say some things like that. Think what would have happened if I was professing to be a child of God and I was living like the world. Then in their little private meetings, Lord to God, Delegate, that when I was out of the control room, they would call me and say, Rev, we got a meeting that you need to hear. But when I would walk in the control room, many times they would shut their mouths. They would say, hold on, Harold's in the room. We'll continue it, glory to God, when he leaves. Now somebody said, well, maybe they were talking about you. Maybe they were. But the reality was, they were talking misdeeds and ungodliness that they knew that I took a stand against. And because I did, they had enough respect for my life that they would not disrespect me in those times. We shouldn't get mad when we can't gather like we used to in small numbers or what it is that they call uh, 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 this time of year when it comes to the birth of our Lord and Savior, whether it's Christmas or whether it's Happy Holidays, those things ought not upset us because we know who we are and we know whose we are and we know what this is all about. But when we get upset, perhaps it's because we're not walking in the wisdom that we ought to be walking in, glory to God. Perhaps, maybe for some, they're not even saved because these things does not matter. What matters is 
that we continue to be strong in the Lord yes. and in the power of his might mm -hmm. that we truly, glory to God, do those things that are pleasing in his sight. For it is not about where we gather, whether on a mountain or in a building, when it comes to worshiping God, it only matters about the substance of our worship. Jesus makes this clear in his account with this Samaritan woman at Jacob's well in the city of Sychar. This well whereat Jesus engages her in order to offer her the living water of life. You remember what Jesus said, woman, can you give me a drink of water? Glory to God. Hallelujah. And she says, thou being a Jew, askest me, glory to God, for a drink of water. Glory to God. And Jesus said, if you knew who it was that was asking you, you would have in turn asked me for a drink, and I would have given you what? This living water. Reality is, hallelujah, he confronted her because the reality was her day had come. This well, whereat Jesus engages her in order to offer her this living water, water that all men and all women must receive if they are going to be saved and have their thirst for this life quenched forever. You see, when Jesus, glory to God, comes in and saves our lives and the Holy Spirit of God comes in, glory to God, Jesus said that the Spirit of God will become a well of water in us, glory to God. And what that means that every need and every and desire that has to be fulfilled, we now have the power of God on the inside of us. Yeah, yeah. And when those things that are not of God Wanted to rise, uh, arise their ugly head. We have the power of God on the inside of us. If we would just take a drink of this living water. Glory to God. Yes. From the Holy Ghost and his guidance. Yes. Never to walk in those things. Jesus asked her for a drink of water. Whereby she responds in amazement. A Jewish man is asking her. Samaritan woman for a drink of water. Because the cultural differences between the Samaritans and the Jews at this time forbidden them to have any association. Though they both claimed Jacob as their father, the Samaritan was, was a kind of hybrid between a Jew, glory to God, and a heathen. So there was great dispute between them concerning their claim. We know that Jacob is the father with Abraham and I of the Jewish nation. So there was contention. So when Jesus asked her, glory to God, for a drink of water, she realized that something's wrong here. I am a Samaritan and you're asking me, being a man that's Jewish, glory to God, for a drink of water? What she did not understand, Deacon Small, this was not the ordinary Jew. This was not the average Jewish peasant. This was not the average Jewish farmer. This was not the average Jewish sheep herd. What she failed to realize, that this Jew was special. Hallelujah. Amen. This was a special Jew. In fact, this Jew was the incarnate Son of God. Amen. This Jew was the Alpha and the Omega. This Jew was the perfect Lamb of God. This Jew was the Prince of Peace to come. This Jew was the Savior of the world. Jesus tells her, if you had known who it was that has asked you for a drink of water, you would have in turn asked him for a drink of water, and he would have given you glory to God, the living water of life. But during this discourse and Jesus' engagement, Tasha, Jesus now unveils her sinful life. You see, she had a little man problem, Beverly. She had one man, and she had two men, and she had three men, and she had 
four men and she had five men, I believe they were six men, might have been seven, and, and she Jesus told her, Go get your husband. And the woman told Jesus, I ain't got no husband. Jesus said, I know. And all them other men, glory to God, that you've been with, they weren't your husband either. And Jesus exposed her sinful life. You see, that's the same thing that happened in our life when the Holy Ghost comes to save us. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit comes in with conviction because where there is no conviction, there can be no salvation. So what he comes in and removes is the cover, glory to God, and the blindness, the covers that hide who it is that we really are, and the scales from our eyes that keep us from seeing because of the blindness. And when they are removed, then we can see our condition. That will compel us to say yes or compel us to say no. Jesus exposes her sinful life. And what does she do? Hallelujah. Like a lot of people today, Amani, she wanted to flip the script. Wanted not to talk about her sinfulness or her sin or her ways, she flipped the script, Deacon Grant, to the thing of worship. Hallelujah. She says, our fathers worship in this mountain. And the Jews say that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. You see, the Samaritans worship at Mount Gerizim. Hallelujah. And the Jews worship at Mount Zion. That is worship in temples according to the law and by the dictates of the law. I want y'all to get this now. Now they worship in their own order of worship. Hallelujah. That they would go to temples and that they would do certain things and hallelujah. That they would offer God certain things in, in temples on, on mountains. But Jesus says to this woman, Believe me that the hour is coming when you shall neither in this mountain nor the Jews at Jerusalem worship the Father. Listen what he says. That old order is getting ready to pass away. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. For God is spirit. Hallelujah. And they that worship him. Must worship him. In spirit. And. In truth. In other words. Jesus was saying that the old order of worshiping God. In temples or buildings. Made by hands. No longer applies. Hallelujah. Worshiping God. By the letter of the law, no longer exists. But that worship now to God will be by those who realize that Jesus is the truth of God, the one and only way to the Father in spirit, because this new realm whereby God has revealed through the Holy Spirit that men must now worship Him. And in truth through Jesus, who apart from no man has access to God the Father. Amen. So when we get offended, hear me up, because we believe our religious liberties are being infringed upon because we cannot assemble as we desire for now in order to worship God. We are missing the mark according to Jesus Christ himself. Because the reality is worship is not about where you worship. Worship is about how you worship. We don't get passes from God because we assemble ourselves as a body in worship. Every tongue must worship the Lord. Amen. When we don't worship in spirit and in truth, the reality is we are not worshiping God at all. Hallelujah. Singing songs and lifting hands and saying hallelujah, all of that is fine. If the truth of the matter, LD, 
over is we are doing it in spirit and in truth. And the one that is able to distinguish between true worship and idol worship and false worship is the one that we are bowing down to to give the worship to. And that's God Almighty. Let me tell you something. God don't accept anything. He accepts the best that we have to offer. And our worship must be in spirit and in truth. If we can only worship God because we gather at 4717 Augusta Road, then our worship is not about much anyhow. We ought to be able to worship God on the job. Worship God in our homes. Worship God in the stores. Worship God in the doctor's offices. We ought to be able to worship God everywhere we go because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. We are not bound by walls and brick and mortar where we, by we worship God because we come to what we call the place of worship. Worship is not a place. It is an act of honor. Yes. Humility. It brings glory. To God. Yes, the world might step on our religious liberties, but it will never be able to infringe on our spiritual worship. Paul accomplished more in jail, hallelujah, than he did when he was outside of jail. Because where Paul was, hallelujah, Deacon Small, the spirit of the living God was with him. The Bible tells us that the man who's incarcerated, who knows the Lord, is God's free man. Amen. And no matter where I'm at, I can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. It will never, it can never infringe on our worship. To God. It's not about corporate gathering, though there's nothing wrong with it. The Bible commands us to assemble ourselves together. That's the word of God. But God wants you to know this morning that in these difficult times, hallelujah, where we can't assemble ourselves because of rules and regulations like we would want to, God said, Don't let the worship stop. Amen. We must worship him right where we are. And if our worship is not in spirit and in truth, it really doesn't matter whether we assemble. Because what we're trying to accomplish will never have any merit. If we are never allowed to reassemble ourselves by man, it can never stop our true worship to God. Amen. Because our worship in spirit and in truth is far above anything that man can impose on us. Be encouraged. When you're riding in your car, oh, yeah. yes, Lord. and the Spirit of the living God comes upon you, <laughs> and the tears begin to roll. Tears of joy, Sister Johnson, yes, that causes us to cry out worship and in praise to God. Yes. When we are in our homes and perhaps some of our loved ones don't understand because they're not walking with the Lord. When the Spirit of God comes upon us that compels us to stop where we are to praise Him and to worship Him. Thank you. Let us not quench the Spirit of God but let us be obedient to offer up worship to God. For all that we know, our worship just may 
be a breakthrough for that lost loved one in our home. So honor the Lord with your worship. Honor the Lord with your praise. But make sure you honor the Lord in spirit and in truth. Lord, we thank you knowing that to be absent from one another corporately as a church does not, does not stop us from fulfilling our duty to you to worship you. We thank you that the Lord has delivered us and made it clear not by the building or a mountain but about truth. So thank you for your deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand to our feet there might be somebody who does not know Jesus Christ in the heart of their sin. We're getting ready to go into that time of the year that we celebrate the birth of the Savior. The one who was sent by the Father to be that perfect offering for sin that men and women might be saved. He fulfilled, hallelujah, the desire of the Father in obedience when he hung on that cross, gave up his life that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. He now is retained by him, waiting for the commandment of the Father to come and to receive his own. If you are not his today, call on the name of Jesus and he will save you. The Bible declares in Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be